So hello and welcome to today's video which is showing you this van here. It's a 2016 Peugeot Boxer that I've been building over the course of about three months and I've been using now for about two years. So as you can see I'm about a van on Instagram and YouTube. My name's Adam. I'm going to show you inside. Hello there and welcome. Why don't you come inside the van and I'm going to show you around. Come to the back of the van. Over here we've got a two ring burner hob. Um, it's really powerful. It's got a small one on the front and a larger one on the back. Um, it's all electronic ignition. So I don't know if you can hear that clicking. We've got some wind going through the van right now. But you turn it on, there you go. You've got heat immediately from the electronic ignition there. Um, from what else you can see here in the van, I'm gonna cover this right now. So you've got your overhead storage um, going down this side and there's three nice large bins. So this is usually like toiletries and washing up stuff for the sink. Um, moving back, I've usually got two sets of clothing. So I've got like t-shirts and jumpers in one and then trousers and um, underwear, socks and stuff in the other. Also above the area that's being filmed now, so above the cab, there's also another big shelf, which I'll show you from another angle. And that's used for wetsuits, trousers, um, the curtains, the kind of blinds that go in the front of the vehicle and anything else that I want to store up there. Um, I tend to use the seats are really useful there for putting towels on and surf hoodies and stuff like that to dry stuff out. Um, over here to the right hand side we've got the Propex control so this is a thermostat you can put a timer on this so if you're outside the van you know you're going to be back at nine o'clock at night and it's a cold evening you can put three hours on that and in three hours time when you come back from the pub it's going to be nice warm and toasty inside the van for you. Over here behind the hob we've got a um, 240 volt outlet so this is going to do USB charging and you've got three plugs that you can plug laptops into, you could run a uh, possibly a kettle if you want to. Um, the inverter that I'm going to show you in a minute is a 1200 watt Victron inverter, so it's got a really nice um, quality inverter in this van um, and that can stay on all the time. It's a marine grade inverter, so they're installed into yachts, canal boats, narrow boats and any other kind of um, boats that you can think of. They're really good quality pieces of kit. So that goes up and down, so that's flush inside the countertop. Up here you've got a copper light switch, which I did to go with the tap um, and also the handles, as you can see on the upper cabinets. And these control, um, they're on two circuits, so you've got the front lights there and then you've got the ones over the bed. Um, I like this in the evening because I don't like to have the ones above the bed on. I like to have the other side on and vice versa. It's nice sometimes to have lighting at the back when you're in the front. Um, but if you want the whole van to be lit up, then you've got both running at the same time. They're all LEDs, they've got a good life, a lifetime on them as well, and um, they're very low draw. So below the hob at the front, we've got drawers. So these are all birch ply, um, they're all hand finished by myself, and they've all got runners on them as well, ball bearing runners. And the, these three are the same size. Um, this one's got cutlery in it. Um, and the lower one has got um, plates, bowls and cups in there as well. Moving down to the bottom, you've got pots, pans, frying pans, uh, packs of tea, cups in there as well. And at the back of that, which you can't see here, is the isolation valve for the cooktop. Over here is the remote control on the wall. And this controls the max air, va air fan that's above on the ceiling. Now these are great bits of kit, they're quite expensive, but the reason I installed this one in here is because it can operate in rainy conditions, it can also operate in windy conditions as well. So with most roof vents, you don't want to leave the, the vent up when it's windy or when it's raining because it will let water inside your van. These are really clever, they've got an overhang on the back of the vent, so it enables them to operate exhaust and inlet when it, whether it's raining or sunny outside. They are thermostat controlled, so you can set a temperature on this um, control that you want and it, it does its own thing. It, it goes on and off as it wants to. Um, it's got a really decent flow rate on there. And also if you wake up in the morning and it's a bit warm in the van, um, you can open that straight up without even getting out of bed. So that is a really nice feature um, and it's great if you're feeling a little bit lazy. Above that on the wall here, I've got a reading light, so you can turn that on in the evening and you can position it down towards the bed. Moving up towards the bed in the back, um, you'll see another nice sized roof vent as well, which lets lots and lots of light in. Um, it's got a curtain, it's got a fly net on one side, and then you pull it the other way, and it's got a curtain, which is a blackout blind, 
So again, if you want to lay in in the mornings, you don't have to worry about being flooded in the face with light. However, if you do want to wake up at um, sunrise, then you can open that up and that's going to wake you up first thing in the morning. The other reason I install those in that position is, and I've done that on two vans now, is so that I can watch the stars at night with the pillows down on the bed there. So that's a really nice feature. Um, one thing about this van is uh, it's been quite functional. I think at the moment it looks quite bare. Um, I think it's very basic. I think with some ivy and somebody's personal flair on the van, it's obviously going to really bring its character out. So do bear in mind that this has some way to go in terms of decoration and little additional pieces that you can you can add to the van to really make it your own as well. Um, I don't know if I said at the beginning of this video, but this van will be for sale at the moment. Um, so I will put the link to the, uh, the website where it's for sale down below. Um, but let's continue the van tour. Um, so over to the right, you've obviously got the slide out pantry. Um, I can't remember whether I showed this in this shot or the last one, so we'll show it again just in case. Um, but that's great for pots, pans, jars, coffee, and stuff like that. Um, that slides in and locks away. To the back here, there's an opening door underneath the sink. You've got your grey water in there, which is a 25 litre water tank. Um, and then I also keep drinking water in there and I've got my shower unit as well. Um, up on top of this side, you've got the sink. It's a really nice size. It's like one and a half bowl. Um, it's not that deep, but it's really good for pots and pans and stuff like that. And you've got the hand finished copper tap on top, which is cold water only and that's operated by turning the pump on and then just opening the tap here. It's got a really nice flow rate um, and that just turns on and off and when you're done with it you turn the pump off there. So I'm next going to show you the battery box here and then we'll go on to what's under the seat and we'll move into the back of the van. So looking down at this side of the cabinetry, because you've obviously seen that side on the last shot that I did, um, we've got the fridge here at the back. Um, this is a really nice size 90 litre um, household fridge. Um, it's got a large freezer compartment at the top and it's really efficient, really quiet, um, and there's loads and loads of food storage in there. Most camper vans have a tiny little 50 litre fridge, which takes a little bit of salad, maybe a yogurt and a carton of milk and you're full. Um, so in terms of food storage, you can pretty much chuck all of the stuff you want in there um, and that, that you've got enough between the slide out pantry and the other drawers and a little bit of storage up here to keep all the food that you need in the van um, and keep it cold and fresh. Moving here to a little bit forwards, we've got the cupboard in the middle. I'm going to show you inside this one now and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on in there which makes all of the electrics run inside this van. Mm -hmm. So the heart of the power system is obviously these two 130 amp lead carbon LEOC AGM batteries. Now most batteries typically have a life cycle of around 300. Um, these have over a thousand. Um, they've been very well maintained. Um, they've only gone below 50% once for a couple of seconds. Um, sorry, for a couple of percent. And uh, I've always made sure that they're maintained well. Um, something that's helped me do that is this, which is the Victron Bluetooth Smart Shunt, and this tells me exactly what I've got going in and out at any given time. Um, above the Smart Shunt there is this large inverter. Now, this is only a 1200 watt, and most people, when they're looking at inverters, are having something that's smaller than that, and it claims that it's 3000 watts. Now, this is a marine grade inverter, so it's a really good piece of kit, really high quality, and you can keep that turned on 24 hours a day, and it's never gonna cause you any problems. Further inside the cabinet there, we've got the black and blue unit. Now, that is a battery charger, and that deals with charging the batteries when you're on hookup. So if you've been using the van for a couple of days and you go to a campsite, that's gonna to top your batteries up whilst you're utilizing the hookup on campsites or your friend's driveway. Below that, um, down at the bottom, we've got a white and red Sterling um, battery to battery charger. Now there's a big difference between battery to battery chargers and virtual split relays. Virtual split relays aren't designed for these vehicles with smart alternators, um, these battery to battery chargers are. And the good thing about those is they are as good as one of these Victron inverters. They run the batteries through the various cycles that they need, which is a bulk charge, um, an absorption charge and a float. 
um, and then above that we've got the MPPT which is the solar charge controller so the solar panel sends power into that unit there and then that unit is uh, manages charging the batteries the rest of the time above that on the wall there you can see the little green gauge that is the gas gauge that tells me how much is in the underslung LPG tank underneath the vehicle and then in the corner there we've got the fuse box which takes care of the fusing so here we've got the bench seat i've taken the cushions off um, so it's easy to get to now if you just lift this lid it's on a nice piano hinge it goes all the way back to the wall um, in the end compartment here we've got the propex hs2000 heat source now that takes care of the heating inside the van and that is linked to the thermostat that's up there on the wall that i mentioned earlier which runs off of a timer the reason I chose these is they're really, really good quality units. They're low maintenance, they don't have filters, they don't have all the troublesome issues that the cheaper Chinese diesel heaters have. Um, it's literally a 12 volt ignition for the spark. It's on a pressurized system from the gas tank that's below the vehicle. Um, and that, that works seamlessly all of the time. Um, these units are known to go on for about 15 to 20 years without a problem. Um, they're a little bit more money up front. One of these units is going to set you back around £550 um, plus extras. Um, a little bit extra I think for the, the thermostat on the wall rather than the basic old one that I had. Um, but they're really, really good bits of kit. Um, moving here to the central compartment, as you can see the silver unit here on the front. That takes care of the lagoon table which I'm going to show you later. Um, inside that's an empty storage compartment so you could fill that with clothes, books, tools, um, food, whatever it is you wish to put in there. Um, and then moving to the end here, this actually, this one has a little door on it with a latch. Again, it's copper to match the light switch. That opens up. Um, and the reason I've left a door on this part is because you can actually get a porta potty in there. Um, just a little cassette toilet that will slip underneath the bench and then you can pull it in and out as you like. Um, so the plan was to, in, uh, to put one of those in there. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, primarily, I've been using campsites um, when I've been staying away at the moment. So I've been using their facilities. Um, so that's just been shoe storage um, at the moment. And then that locks there just to stop the door from swinging open when you're driving along. Um, so now that's done, what I'm going to do is take you outside the van around to the back. Um, I'm going to show you the bed area and underneath the bed with the water tank um, and then we'll move into the cab area and I'll show you that. This is the hookup unit on the side of the van. This is on the near side, which is the passenger side of the vehicle. It's just a flap that lifts up. Um, all you do is you just put your extension cable in there and that makes the van live with main power. Okay, so I might be a bit noisy, there's a road behind you there, um, so I'm going to speak up. Anyway, we're in the back of the van, um, we've got the nice porthole window here in the side, which I like, that opens up and lets a really nice airflow through in the summer when you're sleeping in the bed. Um, above there, we've got the braking light, and that is also your reversing camera as well. Um, so I'm just going to open up the back of the van and then I'll show you what's inside. Okay, so it's a bit windy, I'm going to hold that so it doesn't take off. Um, inside the van at the back here, I've got some tool storage down there, but you could put boxes in there as well if, if you want to store some more stuff under the bed. So lift me under the bed, I've put slats in. Um, I originally started off with a board, um, but I noticed that uh, in the winter, a little bit of moisture built up on the board, so I decided to change that to let more um, ventilation into the van there. Um, over to the right hand side, there's a water tank and there's also a pump there on the side of the wall. Um, that just runs off of the 12 volt battery system um, and pressurizes the water to go to the sink. Um, you could also install a hot water heater here on the back door, which would give you an outside shower and that pump would give you more than enough pressure to do that. Um, I've kept the wood flooring throughout, so it's the same throughout the entire van. Um, and then if we zoom in just down there, um, I've actually left it open underneath the bed through to the living area um, for two reasons. One, to access storage very easily and two, to allow the um, temperature to be the same underneath the bed to stop any build up of condensation in the winter and um, to ensure that both of the zones are kind of the same temperature. Um, if you didn't want to see under the bed all the time, you could actually add a curtain to that area to uh, block it off. Um, but that is the back of the van. So now I'm going to take you back inside the van and we'll finish off up in the cab. Before we move into the cockpit, um, I just wanted to show you the lagoon table. So this swivels and moves around and you can take this off so it's totally out of the way. Um, this part here stores in front of the bench seat and this table leg can also store in front of the bench seat or you can chuck it up there on the shelf above the cab. 
Um, it's really nice because it swivels, you can share a meal with somebody sat next to you, um, you can uh, raise or lower it by adjusting it on the leg here. Um, and the thing I really like about this table is I can grab my laptop um, and I can open the door when I'm by a beach or a mountain. At the moment I'm in Slough so it's not so glamorous, I'm not going to show you that view. Um, but I can look straight out the door, I can eat breakfast, have a coffee, um, work from my laptop um, and enjoy a really nice view. So that's the lagoon table. Now I'm going to move into the front of the cab um, and I'll show you what features we've got going on there. Welcome to the cab. This is where all the driving magic happens. Um, as you can see, I'm on a captain swivel seat here. Um, that is only fitted to the passenger side, not to the driver's side. I didn't think I wanted that one swiveling around as well. One, because if you're going to face each other, your knees are going to clash and two I've got a big bench seat behind it so there's not really a need for it. Um, the good thing about this is if you've got friends or guests in here um, then you can fit a couple of people on the bench seat. Um, I can swivel that way and somebody can face me here um, or you can just have a nice conversation facing each other. Um, also you can kind of rotate around and you can look out of the view that way as well. Um, so moving around into the cab itself um, I've got a reversing camera here, which is linked to that nice factory kind of finish brake light that you've got on the back doors. Um, and you just activate that by turning it on and off by the power button. It's just touch sensitive. It's really, really good. Um, and that is perfect in a vehicle this size because you can get centimeters, um, uh, you can get within a few centimeters of cars, walls and stuff like that. It really makes parking a dream in something this size. Um, moving down, You've got a really nice system for a van. Um, this is a DAB radio sat nav um, entertainment system. So you've got the TomTom -tom features on there. I was in Germany and I I'm sure I remember using that sat nav. So I think it's got European maps on it as well. Um, you can connect your phone for calling and Bluetooth. So if you want to put your tunes on there, you've got that option as well. The van itself has only got 46,000 miles on it. Um, full service history, it's got cruise control and the really nice thing about this van with summer coming up is the air conditioning. It's ice cold and it works really really well. Um, it's nice because not many vans have air conditioning, especially the Sprinters, it's usually an optional extra but with this one it comes as standard so enjoy staying cold in the summer. Um, the mirrors, they're electric and I believe they're heated because I'm pretty sure they used to defrost quite quickly when it was icy and snowy last year. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a really nice van. It's been kept in really good condition. The last owner really took care of it. He didn't do a lot of miles. Um, as you saw in the video earlier, it's a silver van, not a white van, which is a huge bonus for me. Um, and the bodywork is in really good condition. It wasn't used as a careers van. So it's been a pleasure to own and drive um, and it's really not given me any hassle. So I hope that you've enjoyed this van tour. Um, I hope that you'll go over and find me on Instagram if you want to find some more kind of regular content. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and uh, maybe click the bell for notifications when I post a video every six months. Um, I am trying to get better at that. I always say that. Unfortunately, life takes over and here we are in the end of a finished van. Um, but thanks very much for watching. I hope that this has given you some inspiration. And if you're looking to buy this vehicle, um, I hope this has also helped you with your decision. Um, head down to the description below and you're going to find a link to uh, Quirky Campers where this vehicle is listed. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video.